Welcome to Conversations with Ambassador William Eco. Today, Ambassador Eco is discussing environmental issues and climate change. Ambassador Eco, why is it so important now to discuss environmental issues at an international level? Well, I would say all over the world, people face serious risks because of global climate change. No single nation can fix this problem. Countries around the world need to reduce emissions and work to adapt to the changing climate. With the United States playing a leading role, the international community came together in 2009 at the climate conference in Copenhagen, and then again in 2010 at the conference in Cancun, and made unprecedented progress to combat climate change. As a result, all of the major economies of the world, for the first time, made specific commitments to mitigate emissions of greenhouse gases and to ensure accountability and international transparency. What position is the U.S. taking at the 17th Congress to the parties of the United Nations, the COP17, in Durban, South Africa? At the upcoming COP17, we need to build on the progress we made over the last two years. We want new decisions to advance the balanced package of the Cancun agreements. These agreements include writing the required guidelines for transparency and accountability, setting up the Green Climate Fund, a $100 billion a year worldwide initiative. We also agreed to establish the new Clean Technology Center and Network, a new mechanism to support the dissemination of low carbon technologies, and create an adaptation committee to deal with the effects of climate change. These are essential parts of the agreement that need to be advanced. What are some of the potential challenges for the U.S. at the COP17? If we advance climate financing, for example, we also need to advance transparency and accountability. Also, we need to be careful that discussions about the future of the Kyoto Protocol, which expires in 2012, or the potential legal form of a future agreement, do not derail our efforts to complete the work set out in Cancun. We also want to be clear that in considering legally binding outcomes, our firm view remains that all major economies, developed and developing, would be bound to their specific mitigation commitments with equal legal force. Beyond UN climate talks, what are some other U.S. initiatives on climate change, environment, and energy? We are engaging 17 of the largest economies through the Major Economies Forum on Energy and Climate. We are working with G20 partners to phase out inefficient fossil fuel subsidies worldwide in an effort to reduce global greenhouse gas emissions by 10% or more by 2050. And what else on energy issues? Through the International Maritime Organization, the international community adopted in July its first ever global energy efficiency standards for new ships. This will reduce fuel consumption from shipping for decades to come. Ultimately, our goal is not only limiting carbon emissions, but promoting sustainable economic development. A clean energy economy will drive investment and job creation around the world and bring energy services to hundreds of millions of the world's poor. What steps is the United States government taking to be more energy conscious at home? Under President Obama, the United States has done more to reduce greenhouse gas emissions than ever before. President Obama recently announced the next phase in the administration's program to increase fuel efficiency and reduce greenhouse gas emission for all new cars and trucks sold in the United States. The President has also set goals, backed up by policy, to put a million electric cars on the road by 2015 and to increase the efficiency of commercial buildings by 20% within a decade. Under the Recovery Act, the United States is investing more than $90 billion in clean energy. Supplemented by private capital, the Recovery Act is supporting more than $150 billion in thousands of clean energy projects that are making a difference. The President is focused on bolstering the market for new technologies. His proposal for a new clean energy standard will double the percentage of electricity coming from clean sources to 80% by 2035. What about grassroots efforts? Well, I would say local communities are increasingly taking the lead in developing innovative grassroots approaches to combating the causes and effects of global warming. 
According to a study by the United Nations Development Program, most investments to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and to adapt to climate change must take place at the local level. In the United States, local governments and private citizens have been collaborating to curb those emissions without waiting for solutions at the national and international level. What is the U.S. Embassy in Vienna doing to become greener? I'm glad you asked. The U.S. Embassy in Vienna is part of the League of Green Embassies, which includes 25 U.S. Embassies across Europe. Here in Vienna, we are currently in the process of an energy renovation of my residence, the residence of the United States Ambassador to the United Nations, and the main embassy building. These are not large-scale construction projects, but rather a series of many small changes that can greatly affect our carbon footprint. Let me take you on a little tour and show you a couple items. How about that? For example, here in the residence, we're replacing light fixtures and installing energy efficient fixtures that use LED light bulbs instead of incandescent bulbs. We're installing new energy efficient thermostats and we're putting exterior sun control film on the windows to improve the building's energy efficiency. Similar changes are being made at the other residence and at the embassy. For example, here we're installing energy efficient power strips. And here in Vienna, I'm also concerned as a citizen of the world with creating a sustainable environment for futures, future generations of world leaders and world citizens to come. It's very important that we tackle this initiative together. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you'll join us again for future conversations with Ambassador Eco. Thank you.